Uh, you know, it was tough, obviously. Um, you know, didn't execute um, as well as, as we would have liked or as, as we would have hoped. Didn't, didn't play well enough, um, in my opinion, on, on our side to win that game. Um, you know, I felt like the first half we were a little bit too passive, not as aggressive as I've, I've seen us. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do feel like the second half they, they adjusted and, um, and, and played better. And, and, you know, we made some halftime adjustments that, um, that helped. Um, I will say that the kids fought all the way through, you know, gave us a chance there at the end of a four minute situation. Um, we needed to stop to get off the field. Um, just didn't make a, enough plays. Uh, to, to give ourselves a, a chance there, um, you know. So that's, it, it, you know, it's, it's on me to, to get us prepared to make sure that we're prepared going into that game. Um, I thought we had a really good week of practice and, and guys were ready to go. Um, you know, we started started fast that first series and then you know just kind of was, was a step step slow on some things and then some adjustments. Um, you know, hats off to UTSA. That's a it's a solid football team. And, um, well, well coached, got a good scheme. And, um, like I said, we just you know, didn't didn't make enough plays there, um, you know, to to put us in a position to, to win the game. What allowed Franklin to go off in the first half? Obviously, you guys adjusted, but what allowed him to? Kind of you know, I just you know, for a couple reasons. Um, you know, one, I, I thought we had a, we had a problems getting aligned properly, and again, that's on that's on me and that's on us as coaches uh, to get us to make sure we're in positions to to go make plays. And then I, I thought we were just too passive, couldn't get off the field on third downs. Um, you know, I had some had some some reads that uh, we usually make that I've seen us make, um, we just didn't didn't do so on Saturday. So um, you know, we got to evaluate it and self-assess and um, you know have some self-accountability and, and flush it and move forward. We got a, a really uh, good challenge in front of us in uh, University of Virginia. And um, you know, we're looking forward to getting out on the practice field tomorrow and, and playing another game on Saturday. Brian, what kind of space is there before halftime to try and make adjustments? Um, because you did clamp down, especially on the slam rounds. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, so we, we talk in between series, um, you know, throughout the, the first half as a defense, like what were the issues, what were the problems, and, and try to get them corrected um, before we were back out there. And so, you know, we had a list of things that were um, causing us problems. Um, you know that first half, and so you, know, you get in at, at halftime. Um, you, know, you put them on the board. You, you make sure you're on the same page as the staff. And then you go communicate to the to the, your unit on what those adjustments are, what you feel um, like, you know, things that we could do better, things that we, what the problems were, and, and how to solve them, and um, and then you go from there. And so I think, like I said, I thought the guys um, did a did a good job of responding to that and recognizing what the issues were. Um, and then, and then going out and executing uh, what we were adjusting to that, that second round. Right. With, the pa- with the pass, de- or pass defense, was it? Do you think it was more about the, not covering, or was it the more uh, not pressuring the quarterback, or maybe a little bit of both? You know, they they went a lot of quick games, so they were trying to take our outside backers out of it. It seemed like um, just with some false reads and. and and you know, on, on the third downs, it was it was a majority quick game. And so just the recognition of, of the down and distance where the sticks are, um, and some you know some minor technique um, adjustments, um, and really just you know they they in my opinion they played the second half from a coverage standpoint, uh, much like they played spring and fall in, in that first game. Um, you know, so we just gotta we gotta figure you know we gotta lock into why that wasn't the case you know that first half. Um, you know, I think I think those issues have, have been addressed. Brian, what was the yeah. impact of losing Keith there on that second series? How did that change the, the game? You know, it, obviously Keith is a great player and, and adds to the depth um, up front, and, and he's athletic as, as all get out for somebody that's 300 pounds. Um, you know, luckily we got guys that kind of rotate in there and, and, and can hold the rope. Um, but obviously, you know, Keith is he keeps us fresh, he keeps us uh, energized, and so obviously it, it hurts when you, when you lose somebody like that up front. Why do you think it was so hard to get off the field on third down? No, like I said before, you know, just the awareness of uh, the uh, the down the distance and the, some of the techniques we were playing. Um, you know, we just cleaned that up at, at halftime, and, and that, that, that allowed us to get off the field in the second half a little bit better. You look at Virginia; uh, they roll against William and Mary. I'm assuming they probably didn't have to open up the playbook as much. Does that make well, they, they still open up the playbook now. Did they? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Robert, Robert, and I—I I got a chance to work with him at University of Arizona. Um, First full-time job, and um, you know he's he's the king of the designer of the weeks. You know what I mean? You see every different formation, um, 
possible. You see every shift and motion possible. Um, and he, he does a good job with his with his scheme. And they got talented guys in there. You know, they got you know, sometimes they'll have you know two quarterbacks on the, on the field at the same time. And, um, you know, one of them is they're both athletic. You know what I mean? And so you just kind of be, have to be aware of um, what what personnel groupings on the field and, and what you're going to get out of those. So. Um, like I said, I, I have a lot of respect for him as a, as a play caller and a, and a designer. Brian, what are you getting out of Derek Smith two weeks into the season? What are you seeing? You know, he's big, athletic. He can run. He can tackle. Um, you know, he was, he was productive last night. Um, you know, sometimes he can he can get a little too aggressive. Um, but uh, you know, I'm, 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 I love him in our room and and what he adds to the to the secondary, especially somebody his size and that skill set. Adjustment wise for guys in the star position, which is obviously new to this scheme, mm -hmm. how do you feel like they're kind of adjusting to all of this stuff that's new? I and mean, it seems to be changing each week for that position. Um, in terms of changing each week for that position, what, what in terms of just like adjusting to this new thing that they haven't done before and still kind of learning it on the fly, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I thought Quan from a from an assignment standpoint, um, he was pretty assignment sound. Um, you know that that position um, from an assignment standpoint probably isn't as complicated as you probably you might think it is. Um, you know, a lot of times he's he's lined up over number two to the field, and you know, based on what we got called, you know, that that's, dictates what his responsibility is. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that you know we got guys like Quan that can that can do that because they're not only can they cover it, but they can show up in the run game. Um, and so that that kind of gives us some flexibility um, depending on. What personnel grouping is on the field? How do you think your linebackers stepped up to replace CJ this week? You know, I thought they did a good job. Um, you know, obviously, you know, every position group had had their moments, right? But um, you know, I, I think Tariq played well. You know, he, he was productive. Um, you know, Kalen Tolson is, is another guy that, that is getting more more snaps and, and was, was also productive. And so, you know, we'll we'll keep getting better. And, and Keep uh, keep improving every week, and um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to the challenge this week. You started Saturday's game with another different look defensively with Tolson and Barnes both out there with, with Jake. Just what when you can utilize that? What do you like maybe about that look? Well, that, we started that way because they start off in 12 personnel, so that, that's why uh, you know, if they only have two receivers out there. I don't. I'd rather not play with with five DBs. You know what I mean? Um, so that's why you saw the three the three backers out there. So um, the you know the previous week if we'd got 12, you know we were, it was the same the same scenario. Um, and, but you know Tolson came on and, and CJ was out there as the uh, as the same backer. So um, just that you know it's a matchup game. Um, you know if you if you got tight ends in the core that are that are there to to block the run, you want you want your back, backers in there. You know what I mean? So philosophy is let the cover guys cover and, and let the let the fighters fight. Uh, tackled well against Nebraska, but then this week it seemed like he had a few more missed tackles. Yeah. Did, that, did that surprise you a little bit? A little how, bit. How, how do you address that with the guys? Yeah, a little bit. And most of it was, um, you know, alignment issues pre-snap that kind of get you in positions where uh, you're not you're not in a, a position that you're used to being in to go to in your entry point to go make a tackle. Um, you know, I thought we lost lost leverage too many times. Um, you know, setting the edge on the defense, whether that's the first or the second level or the third level from you know from a crack and play standpoint. Um, so those things are, were they, that added to being being in positions where you, you're stressed to make a, a tackle instead of uh, being under control and, and having the right leverage point based on where your help is at. Right. Obviously, you had training camp to evaluate your roster and team, but how, how do games? How much do you get to evaluate your guys during games? Like how different is that than training? I mean, I, you know, live scenarios is is the telltale, right? And so, you know, for for us as a staff, it's okay. What you know? What are we doing well? What do we need more work at? Um, you know, still I got you know all the confidence in the world with the guys we got and, and what we're doing um, because I've you know I've seen it since spring and fall in, in that first game. You know, so you don't want to you don't want to freak out and, and all of a sudden hit the panic button off of a, of a one outing, right? Um, but there are there are there are questions that needed to be answered and. Um, there are some things that, from a, from the staff standpoint, that we can fix um, as well. And, and like I said, everybody's got to, you know, you got to learn from this, and you got to have some self accountability um, throughout, you know, throughout the program, and, and then you move forward and, and, and step on to the next challenge. Brian, you mentioned alignment. Talked about basically 
he felt like the, he kind of talked about he wanted to shoulder this all the blame to the secondary just to keep one of the captains of that group. Who's that? Tony yeah. Adams. Tony Adams. So as a, as a coach, how do you help him, I guess, accept responsibility but not accept too much responsibility and just, I guess, help him and the rest of that group just get through to the next game? Yeah, I mean, you just, we, we talk about it all the time is how you're going to handle that adversity, right? And, you know, before the season, I said adversity is going to hit, whether it's, um, you know, within the game or, or throughout the course of the season because you, you lost the game. Um, these are just one of those moments, right? So, you know, the, the biggest mistake you can make is, is to not learn from it. Um, so you gotta, you know, you gotta swallow, swallow your pride a little bit, and, and look in the mirror, and look at the tape, um, and look back at the that week's preparation. Like what were some of the things that we could have worked on more? Um, what can we emphasize more? Um, then, you, then you move on so that you don't make those same mistakes again. Right. You mentioned alignment issues a couple of times. What, what do you think is behind that? I mean, do you have any after yeah, I think, you? yeah, you know, I think part of it is part of it is my fault in, in trying to do some some things a little bit different. Um, and then you know, part of it is, is just having the urgency to get lined up. Um, so I think that again, there's some there's some accountability both ways there. Right. You mentioned. Felt confident still in your D line depth, even right. after Keith went out. Is that not something you feel like you still have to scheme around, or do you feel like you have enough quality individuals down that depth chart right now you can rely on? Yeah, I think we, you know, in the, depending on what Keith's status is, you know, right? Um, but I still feel like we got quality individuals um, that, that can rotate the way we need to rotate, um, you know, based on how many how many plays we're getting game. Okay. Um, and you know, Coach James has done a great job with his interior guys.